Taoiseach, when will your government act to prevent a genocide in Gaza? In just over 100 days, more than 25,000 people in Gaza have been killed. 80% of the world's hungriest people are now in Gaza because of a man-made famine. Contagious disease is sweeping through the nearly 2 million displaced people. The healthcare system has been obliterated. Not only are senior Israeli government officials making regular genocidal statements, they're explicitly rejecting a two-state solution. Yesterday, Israel's foreign affairs minister suggested the international community built an artificial island in the Mediterranean for Palestinians. Clearly, the Israeli government has lost all grip of reality, proportionality and humanity. So what are you waiting for? For the death toll to reach 30,000, 40,000, 50,000? As you know, Taoiseach, the Social Democrats have a motion tomorrow calling on the government to act and support South Africa's case under the Genocide Convention against Israel at the International Court of Justice at the earliest opportunity as a matter of urgency. Last night, sometime after 10pm, we found out that the government, it was changing the dull schedule this week to introduce your own motion on Gaza today in advance of ours tomorrow. I read through it and I wonder why you bothered. It doesn't contain any commitment to intervene on the side of South Africa at the International Court of Justice. All you say is this will be considered after the preliminary ruling. Tisha, it's obvious that the government doesn't want to use or even contemplate the word genocide when it comes to Israel's actions in Gaza. That's why you're refusing to take a stance now and signal your support for South Africa in the Court of Justice. You want to wait until you have the cover of the preliminary ruling and then you'll consider your options. This approach lacks courage. It's at odds with the annihilation that we're witnessing and your words of support for Palestinians. While your government is faffing around, other countries are making their intentions clear. Germany have already announced they will intervene in the case on the side of Israel, saying they firmly and explicitly reject the accusation of genocide. The US and the UK have also made their views clear. They have rubbished South Africa's case as meritless and unjustified. Tishuk, Western countries are lining up to support Israel. There could not be more of a pressing need for countries like Ireland to signal their support for South Africa now. And your government's claim it cannot simply isn't credible. In fact, you have a duty to do so. Under the Genocide Convention, states have a duty to punish and to prevent genocide. And the first step of fulfilling that duty is to assess the risk of genocide. That means starting the process now, not waiting. Will you signal Ireland's intention to intervene at the earliest possible opportunity? And will you start that process now? Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Deputy. Uh, like everyone in the House, um, I'm appalled at the ongoing uh, violence that's occurring uh, in Gaza and indeed in the West Bank and in Israel, um, where uh, millions of people have been displaced. Um, and tens of thousands of people have been killed, um, mostly women, women and children. Um, and we should not forget that there are two sides to this conflict. And it is the case that many more Palestinians have died than Israelis, and many more Palestinians have been displaced than Israelis, but there have been Israelis killed and Palestinians uh, and Israelis displaced too. And I think it's important that that should be acknowledged uh, in, perhaps, perhaps in, in your next remarks. Uh, in terms of what we're doing uh, as a government, um, we're working at EU level, at UN level, and at bilateral level to do anything we practically can do uh, to bring about a ceasefire. We are among the first countries in the world to call for a humanitarian ceasefire, and that's the way uh, we voted at UN and EU level, and we'll continue to look for that, because we need a ceasefire so the humanitarian aid can get in, the killing can stop, and the hostages who are still being held in Gaza uh, can be released. Uh, what happens at the ICJ and the International Criminal Court is really important. Uh, we're very big supporters of these institutions. Um, but I'm sad to say I don't believe uh, that an order from the ICJ will bring about an end to this conflict. It didn't in Ukraine. Uh, and it may be four years before the case is finally decided. So this conflict will be brought to an end uh, by diplomacy and by politics. And that's why we're focusing on diplomacy and, and politics, Deputy. In terms of what the government is asking the House to agree tonight, uh, is to recognise that our overwhelming priority is exactly that 
trying to achieve a ceasefire uh, on both sides and an end to the violence by diplomacy and politics. Uh, we're also demanding un unhindered humanitarian access to Gaza and we're supporting the UN uh, in its work in that regard. We're also committing to support any decision of the ICJ on preliminary measures. These will be final and binding on the parties concerned and we'll urge all parties to genocide convention to do so. We're also committing to consider an intervention in the South Africa versus Israel case at the ICJ. This is done at the point when South Africa would file its main case, it's a memorial case, to date while some countries have indicated that they will intervene, none have yet, because uh, that doesn't happen until that point. This is exactly the approach we took in relation to Ukraine. Uh, we will also drive efforts at EU level uh, to bring about sanctions against violent settlers in the West Bank. In relation to ICG, ICG cases, Deputy, uh, I can inform the House uh, that the Attorney General will travel to The Hague on the 22nd of February uh, to make Ireland's intervention in, personal, in person in relation to uh, the situation in Israel and Palestine. And that relates to an uh, existing case before the ICJ in relation to Israel's actions in Palestine and, and the West Bank. So I hope that proves that we're taking this seriously, that we take the ICG seriously, but we want to do this properly just as we have with that case and just as we did in relation to Ukraine. Thank you. It's interesting that you mention um, the case in Ukraine because the Tornister had no such reluctance when it came to Russia less than two months after Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. He labelled it a genocide. And I think that the double standard really beggars belief. Israel claims that it's doing everything in its power to protect civilians in Gaza. It says that while it's dropping 2,000 pound bombs on densely popula populated residential areas. These enormous bombs aren't being used sparingly either. They've been dropped in their hundreds on an area half the size of Loud. How can countries that claim to value human rights and international law sit back and watch this? And Taoiseach, I agree that Ireland has been a really strong voice for the Palestinian people on the world stage, but words won't provide a defence from the bombs, from the famine and from the disease sweeping through Gaza. Saying you can't act now is simply disingenuous. Like I said, Germany has signalled their intention to act. We could signal our intention now, start the process with a legal team on establishing the case, and we must stand on the right side of history with regard to this. Sitting by and watching this happen, waiting when 250 people are dying every single day, simply lacks the courage that is needed at this point. Will you act with the same degree of urgency as Germany? Will you act with the same degree of urgency you did with Ukraine and signal your intention to support South Africa's case Fair at much. the Court of Justice Fair immediately? Thanks, uh, thanks, Deputy. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the Attorney General will travel to the International Court of Justice in The Hague on the 22nd of February and will in person make Ireland's intervention uh, in relation to a case uh, relating to Israel and Palestine and the actions happening there. So I think that demonstrates that we take these things seriously uh, and that we take the ICJ seriously. In relation to the Genocide Convention case, we'll adopt the same approach as we did in relation to Russia and Ukraine. Uh, we will wait until uh, South Africa files its memorial, its main case. We'll consider it and then at that point uh, we'll decide on the nature of any intervention. But we do agree that uh, South Africa's case is valid. Uh, in relation to your own motion, Deputy, uh, I think it is good in parts, uh, but I do think it is flawed, and I'd like you to consider amending it. Um, it doesn't condemn Hamas. Uh, it doesn't call for the release of the hostages, and I think that's wrong. Um, it doesn't call for Hamas to cease fire uh, or to disarm, and Hamas is a terrorist organisation, and terrorist organisations should uh, disarm. In fact, the only real mention of Hamas and, Octo and the events of October the 7th is to say that they don't justify Israel's actions, and I don't think that's good enough. Thank you.